Hey everybody, we're continuing our reading on, I'll just put my microphone on here. We are continuing our reading on the science of getting rich, which is in the sciences of getting, of science of successes, the science of getting rich is what we're reading. So we are on chapter six, how riches come to you. I may move this off screen just so I can read it, but I gave you some cool stuff to look at. Also, don't forget to check out, I just did a fabulous hypnosis, um, hypnosis on manifestation of how to get what you want. And I have the March subscription box for this month is all about money and getting that. So check those things out. Don't forget down below. We have the links to everything. M amazing. The best tarot card readings, the best magical products, spells, anything you need. So go ahead and hit that link below. But in the meantime, let's get back to chapter six, how rich has come to you. So I'm just going to be off camera reading this a little bit. Well, I'll, I'll try to read it on camera. I just have so many cords in my way. Okay. When I say that you do not have to drive sharp bargains, I do not mean that you do not have to drive any bargains at all, or that you are above the necessity for having any dealings with your fellow man. I mean that you will not need to deal with them unfairly. You do not have to get something for nothing, but can give to every man more than you take from him. You cannot give every man more cash market value than you take from him, but you can give him more in use value than the cash value of the thing you take from him. The paper, ink, and other materials in this book may not be worth the money you paid for it, but if the ideas suggested by it bring in thousands of dollars, you have not been wronged by those who sold it to you. They have given you great use value for very small cash value. Let us suppose that I own pictures by one of the great artists, which any civilized community is worth thousands of dollars. I take it to Baffin Bay and by salesmanship introduce an Eskimo to give a bundle of furs worth 500 for it. Now, just forget, don't forget this book was written in 1910. So the um, number values are off and also the racial terms are not proper nowadays. I'm just reading the book as is, okay? If I have really wronged him for he has no... I, I'm sorry, I have really wronged him for he has no use for the picture. It has no value to him and it will not add to his life. Suppose I give him a gun worth $50 for his furs. Then he has made a good bargain. He has use for the gun and it will get him many more furs and much food. It will add to his life in every way and it will make him rich. When you rise from the competitive to the creative plane, you can scan your business transactions very strictly. If you are selling any man anything which does not add more to his life than the thing you give in exchange, you can afford to stop it. You do not have to beat anybody in business. And if you are a business that does beat people, get out of it at once. Give every man more in use value than you take from him in cash value. Then you are adding to the life of the world by everyday business transaction. If you have people working for you, then you must take from them more in cash value than you pay them in wages. But you can so organize your business that will be filled with the principle of advancement. And so that each employee who wishes to do so may have advancement a little every day. You can make your business do for your employees what this book is doing for you. You can so conduct your business that it will be a sort of a ladder by which every employee who will take the trouble may climb to riches himself and given the opportunity, if he will not do so, it is not your fault. And finally, because you are to cause the creation of your own riches from the formless substance, which permeates all your environment, it does not follow that they are to take shape from the atmosphere and come into being before your eyes. If you want a sewing machine, for instance, I do not mean to tell you that you are to impress the thought of a sewing machine on thinking substance until the machine is formed without hands in the room where you sit or elsewhere. But if you want a sewing machine, hold the mental image of it with the most positive certainty that it is being made or is on its way to you. After once forming the thought, have the most absolute unquestioning faith that the sewing machine is coming. Never think of it or speak of it in any other way than being sure to arrive. Claim it as already yours. It will be brought to you by the power of the superintelligence acting upon the minds of man. If you live in Maine, it may be that a man will be brought from Texas or Japan to engage in some transaction, which will result in your getting what you want. If so, the whole matter will be as much to that man's advantage as it is to yours. Do not forget for a moment that the thinking substance is through all, in all, communicating with all, and can influence all. 
The desire of thinking substance for fuller life and better living has caused the creation of all the sewing machines already made. And it can cause the creation of millions more and will whenever men set it in motion by desire and faith and acting in a certain way. You can certainly have a sewing machine in your house, and it is just as certain that you can have any other thing or things which you want, and which you will use for the advancement of your own life and the lives of others. You need not hesitate about asking largely, is it your father's pleasure to give you the kingdom, said Jesus? Original substance wants us all, wants to live all that is possible in you, and wants you to have all that you can or will use for living the most abundant life. If you fix upon your consciousness the fact that the desire you feel for the possession of riches is one with the desire of the omnipotence for the more complete expression, your faith becomes invincible. Once I saw a little boy sitting at a piano and vainly trying to bring harmony out of the keys. I saw that he was grieved and provoked by his inability to play real music. I asked him the cause of his vexation and he answered, I can feel the music in me, but I can't make my hands go right. The music in him was the urge of the original substance, containing all the possibilities of all life. All that there is of music was seeking expression through the child. God, the one substance, is trying to live and do and enjoy things through humanity. He is saying, I want the hands to build wonderful structures, to play divine harmonies, to paint glorious pictures. I want my feet to run errands eyes to see my beauties, tongues to tell the mighty truths, and to sing the marvelous songs, and so on. All that there is of possibility is seeking expression through men. God wants those who can play music to have pianos and every other instrument, and to have the means to cultivate their talents to the fullest extent. He wants those who can appreciate beauty to be able to surround themselves with beautiful things. He wants those who can discern truth to have every opportunity to travel and observe. He wants those who can appreciate dress to be beautifully clothed, and those who can appreciate good food to be luxuriously fed. He wants all these things because it is he himself that enjoys and appreciates them. It is God who wants to play and sing and enjoy beauty and proclaim truth, wear fine clothes, and eat good foods. It is that God worketh you to do, to will and to do, said Paul. The desire to feel for riches is the infinite, seeking to express himself in you, as he sought to find expression in the little boy at the piano. So you need not hesitate to ask largely. Your part is to focalize and express the desire of God. It is a difficult point with most people. They retain something of an old idea that poverty and self-sacrifice are pleasing to God. They look upon poverty as a part of the plan and necessity of nature. They have the idea that God has finished his work. He made all he can make and that the majority of men, I just had a little notification pop up, but I don't know if you heard a beep. (laughs) Um, They have the idea that God has noticed his work and made all that he can make, and that the majority of men must stay poor because there's not enough to go around. They hold to so much of this erroneous thought that they feel ashamed to ask for wealth. They try not to want more than a very modest competence competence? I think that's how it is. Just enough to make them fairly comfortable. I recall now the case of one student who was told that he must get into a mind, must get in mind a clear picture of the things he desired so that the creative thought of them might be impressed upon the formless substance. He was a very poor man living in a rented house and having only what he earned from day to day. He could not grasp the fact that all wealth was his. So after thinking the matter over, he decided that he might reasonably ask for a new rug for the floor of his best room and an anthracite coal stove to heat the house during the cold winter. Following the instructions given upon this book, he obtained these things within a few months. It then dawned upon him that he had not asked enough. He went through the house in which he lived and planned all the improvements he would like to make. He mentally added a bay window here and a room over there until it was complete in his mind as his ideal home. He then planned his furnishings. Holding the whole picture in his mind, he began living in a certain way and moving toward what he wanted, and he owns the house now and is rebuilding it after the form of his mental image. And now, with still larger faith, he is going on getting greater, he's going on to get greater things. It has been undue, it has been unto him according to his faith, and it is so with you and all of us.
There you go. So that's our chapter six. What do you think about that one? Could you go around your house and picture everything the way it needs to be or go through your life and picture everything the way it needs to be? If you can, or if you're, you might have trouble with that, check out, I just did that meditation. It should be um, the hypnosis. I think I'm labeling it uh, hypnosis manifestation meditation. Check that out. Um, Cause that actually, it's so funny cause I had just recorded that before I recorded this and it talks about the same thing. So thank you for hanging in there. We'll have chapter seven later this week. And we'll get you going on being scientifically successful and scientifically rich. Have a great day, guys.